Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to interview Dr. Kristen Wilmot, Senior Private Counselor at Top Tier Admissions. And today we're going to talk about how to choose a grad school that's right for you. Dr. Wilmot, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So my first question, say someone has a desire to go to grad school, but has no idea which grad school to apply to. So how should someone start their grad school search process? What are some of the main questions that students should ask themselves? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So, I mean, one of the things that I try to urge students to focus on is in an ideal land, you're trying to place yourself into the mindset of an admissions officer. So that is a big part of what we do at Top Tier Admissions. I'm a former Harvard University admissions and financial aid officer for the Grad School of Arts and Sciences. So I approach this process as both a former admissions officer, but also someone who's worked for eight years in the field of helping students think about college and grad school. We work anywhere from eighth grade up to the PhD level. And I also am not only a parent, but also a, a former K through 12 substitute teacher and a, a someone who is, has taught at three universities across Massachusetts and New York. So I like to, to kind of urge students to think about the various hats that they may wear as they approach the grad school admissions process. So what has been their educational pathway so far and what are they hoping to gain? Not just, you know, hey, I want to go to grad school, I want a master's, but what's the purpose of that master's degree? What's the purpose of the MBA? When is, when is the best time for you to pursue that as you think about your career track? So I think the best way to do that is to utilize the free resources that exist out there on the web. You can now very easily click through a department's website. You can look up the faculty CVs. You can see the types of introductory courses you'd be taking in your fall term at grad school X. So I think that ultimately it's very good to reflect on your geographic location preference, the type of field that you're considering. If you're on the fence about, hey, I think I want to go to grad school, but I have no idea what field, that's probably not a good time to start applying to these programs that cost $60,000 or more. I would really urge you to kind of take a step back, maybe consider a graduate level course, look on Coursera, look on EDX, try to think about what are some lower cost options I could pursue before I jump in full force to the graduate admissions atmosphere. And so those kinds of, of questions would be good to analyze before you even start prepping your essays. Because if you get into the thick of writing a personal statement, and ultimately you're not sure the type of institution you want, you're not sure the type of courses you're seeking, then it's gonna to be tough to write a very convincing personal statement, supplementary essays, all of that. So if you can do that research on the front end, look at some department websites, look at faculty CVs, look at research-oriented conferences, and get that information up front before you even enter, hey, I'm gonna complete my application now, that would be great so, so that you can ensure you're preparing an application that will rise up above your peer applicants because you're very informed, because you have very clear direction. Great, so jumping to this point, you spoke about it a little bit about the online resources that are available that people can use that are interested in grad school. But what about, what about for undergraduate students who have a desire to go to grad school right after undergraduate school? Are there any resources on their campuses that they can use that might help them? Absolutely. So almost every campus that I know of has some form of the career services office, and oftentimes that's merged in with the graduate school admissions office. Unfortunately, what we tend to find is a lot of those are not super well funded or super well staffed. Some are, and they're more than willing to book a lot of individual appointments with you. I would certainly urge every student, I mean, you're paying tuition, even if you're on an online program for a virtual setup this fall, you still have access to career services opportunities on your campus that now you can do via a Zoom appointment, for example. And that's always great to pursue. When you are a, a paying college student, you should utilize all of the resources that are available to you as an undergraduate student. Oftentimes those will be in the form of, hey, here are options that exist. Hey, I can do some resume editing for you. Hey, here are the types of programs that are out there for you. I do think it can be quite advantageous to at least book some of those initial meetings. 
Some top colleges are known to have some great webinars. They'll offer you input on, hey, here's, here's an alumnus that you could meet with who has gone on to a, a program that you're interested in. Certainly do utilize those resources. It varies across institutions as to the extent at which the kinds of students I talk with say, yes, that was a really beneficial relationship. Yes, I feel like I was set on a great graduate school pathway. Some colleges I think are great at, at offering advice and, and input. And some colleges kind of make students feel a little bit more on their own. Hey, we're focusing on college. You want grad school? That's great. We hope you apply here. We'd love to keep you, but best of luck as you consider your pathway. So it's certainly, you know, not, you're not out anything to explore if you can get some resume editing to explore, if you can get some input from career services from someone at that career services office who could offer you coaching on master's consulting, on MBA consulting, on pre-med. All of those would be great for you to explore and then see if that was helpful to you or not. Sometimes I have students who uh, pursue a, a mix of that, meaning, yes, I'm gonna rely on my college for the career services office, but I'm also going to pursue admissions consulting because I need a bit more personalized one-on-one -on -one attention. But really, just it just boils down to what is most appealing to you in terms of the type of help that you're seeking and where you're at in the process. Okay. Great. So now on to money, which is a big mm -hmm. part of it. So what are some ways that students can cut down on the amount of money they spend on grad school and the amount of money that they have to borrow for grad school? Right. So, I mean, I think that especially in the year 2020 and moving forward, that is a very important question. To go to grad school just to go to grad school would not be something that I ever really advise. You would want that to be a targeted pathway that gets you something, right? Not just, hey, I have this piece of paper now. I'm very mindful of students where they walk out with a master's and then they come to me later on and say, oh, now what? Now I think I need a different master's. That doesn't work for anybody. I'm also very mindful of anybody who leaves a graduate school program with a hefty amount of loans. That's not something that lets you start your career in the best possible way, to say the least. So I do think that that's one thing that we at Top Tier Admissions do focus on is helping students secure merit-based aid, helping them pinpoint the types of programs that they will be successful at in the admissions process. I'm happy to say that we are able to help a lot of students secure merit aid, which means it's not relying on the amount of the finances that you bring to the table. Certainly completing the FAFSA, all of that is, is something that students need to be mindful of as they think about what is the out-of-pocket contribution, the expected family contribution, as they often call it, that I am willing to put into this process. And then the other thing that I like to urge students to remember is when you apply to graduate school, as long as you're prepping your personal statement anyway, you should cast a wide net. So just because you apply to a school and you get in doesn't mean you're obligated to go. If there's not an early decision binding commitment, which is way less common in grad school than in the college arena, certainly there are, there are some MBA programs, there are some other opportunities where you can lock in early decision. But if you're not locked in, applying and casting a wide net is going to be advantageous for you most, most likely. You'll be out the application fee and you should weigh that. Some of those are hefty at $175. That's not a small chunk of change. But you should be mindful of casting a wide net in an ideal land so that you can see the type of financial aid that is tossed back at you because it's a two-way street. Ultimately, that's going to be a hefty expense in terms of time, effort, and money. And you need to weigh all of those as you think about what am I walking out with? Is this the type of university where I feel comfortable spending X number, number of dollars? Or am I more drawn to this package that I received from another university? So my wish for every graduate school applicant is that you have a variety of schools that desperately want you and toss you mere aid in that fashion versus, you know, hey, I got into these schools, but look at these thousands of dollars of loans that I now have to take on. That's not something I want for anyone. I'm happy to say that, that we do, for the most part, work with a good amount of students who are really, I think, pleasantly surprised with the amount of merit aid that they are tossed because of the phenomenal caliber of application components that we help them prep. Great. So you touched on this a bit earlier, but I kind of want to go further into it. So some students obviously have plans to go to graduate school right after undergrad. Sometimes their parents tell them that that's what they should do. That's a path they should take. 
And then other times people will spend a couple years in the professional world before they go to grad school. So can you kind of speak, is, is one path better than the other or it really depends on the person? One path is not really better than the other. The one exception is when I have students who are looking at an MBA. That's a specialized degree and most top MBA programs will require, if not very highly encourage, you go spend some time in the working world before you apply to them. And certainly the students who I work with who head on to top MBA programs, some of the top 10 in the nation, internationally as well, they are securing a good amount of full-time work experience, climbing the career ladder prior to the time of their MBA application. I think the biggest thing that we do need to be mindful of in the, in the current and future COVID world is factoring in where you're at financially, career-wise, from an education standpoint. All of that has now introduced some new hurdles and some new things to be mindful of. There's not one pathway that is better than the other in terms of, yes, go straight for a master's immediately as you wrap your college career. I also have a good amount of students who say, yeah, I mean, I had a very rewarding time in college, but I need to go find my path a little bit and I want to go obtain three to five years of work experience or two years of work experience. My wish for every student is that you don't walk out of college saying, ah, now what, right? Because that's not advantageous. You want to be able to head into the winter of your senior year with a clear path on where you're headed. And so we do coach students in college, even when they're not headed straight to grad school. We do something called our college enrichment program, where our goal is to help you feel that you have a clear path, even in the midst of, of COVID chaos, so that you're not walking out of college saying, oh, I don't have a job, I'm not headed to grad school, now what? We don't want that for anyone, because that just leaves you kind of a, a bit confused. It can be wonderful to pursue a full-time job post-college. It can also be wonderful to dive right into grad school. You're already in student mode anyway. Take those three months and then dive in August 15th, starting in a master's program. One, one pathway is not better than the other. For us, we feel that it's a very personalized process, a very personalized decision based on your educational and career aims. Okay, great. So kind of to wrap up here, I know this is going to grad school can be a very big, overwhelming, and at times expensive decision for students. So can you kind of run us through some of the main benefits of going to grad school? What are the rewards of that experience? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So I think one of the biggest benefits of going to grad school is that you are pursuing something at a higher level, right? So when you go to college, a lot of times students are exploring new fields. Yes, they end up ultimately selecting a major. They end up pursuing some electives that are appealing to them. By the time you apply to grad school, though, hopefully you have a, a bit more solid direction on this is what I'm interested in. This is the field I love. And when you apply and get into a, a top graduate school, you are working with some of the best faculty in the world at what they do. They're renowned faculty with impressive research facilities, with peer students who are interested in the same field that you are. The research experience and exposure that you can obtain will certainly be hopefully something that stays with you. Those connections, that networking web that you gain access to is very valuable. I also work with students where they, when they're in graduate school, work to maximize all opportunities available to them. So that may align with a research internship, with a paid position that they do on nights and weekends. They forge connections with peer students and then go launch wonderful businesses. They secure publications. They do conference presentations. They have professional affiliations that are standouts for them, that set them forward on a wonderful career path so that when they walk out of that graduate school program, they feel confident in, yes, this is the piece of paper that I've secured. Here's my amazing diploma. This will sit on my resume, my CV for life in terms of where I went to grad school. But also they walk out feeling like their career is something that has now been a bit unlocked in terms of your, your potential is now set forth and you're on a wonderful pathway to what will hopefully be a very rewarding career, something that lets you climb the career ladder in the best way that, that would be possible. You. Great. Well, thanks for joining us, Dr. Wilma. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for inviting me. It's great to chat with you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more interviews like this, please subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.